Hello again, I'm Henry T. Welcome to Be Inspired with Henry T. here at KZQ Channel 32. What a blessing for me to be in here today with a longtime friend. And this guy's got a story to tell that won't quit. And you need to give him your undivided attention. His name is Alvin Metters. I met him way back when I was the Boys Club director in Old Town. And he was a young man coming up with all his buddies and a great basketball player. Always been a nice guy. And I always wondered, what makes Elvin Metters tick? Today, we're gonna find that together and he's gonna inspire us at the same time. Elvin Metters, what a joy to have you in the studio with me today. Hey, well, hey, thanks a lot, Henry. It's good to be here. You what know, a joy. unexpected, you know, but I'm glad to be here. Former great player at Albuquerque High, ladies and gentlemen and former great player at Highlands University. And you have this uncanny ability of, as a big man, driving to the hoop, handling the ball well, you could defense anybody, but you played with all your heart. It goes down, nobody played harder or worked harder than Elvin Metters. Where did you get that work ethic? Well, you know what? It was instilled in me through my mom, you know, because we never had anything. So she always told me, son, if you do anything, you know, put your whole effort and all your heart into it and, and get the most out of it so that you won't be feeling that you never accomplished what you wanted to do. So pretty much it was my mother. Describe your mom for us. So we're going to start there. I want you to describe this incredible lady. Boy, she was a strong, strong-willed lady. You know, she, she, she loved her kids. She would do anything that it took to make sure that we had the things that we needed. You know, I remember as I was growing up, you know, we would have a, about two or three pair of pants uh, that we'd have for the whole school year, but she would make sure that those pants had a crease in those pants that would last the whole year for us, you know? So it looked like we was neat going to school at all times, so. I guess that's why I like to have my clothes the way I wear now because of her and the way that I carry my lifestyle is because of her. The way that I do everything is because of my mother, you know, because she instilled a lot into me, you know. Matter of fact, I could even cook, I could sew, I could wash, I could do everything that, that women's supposed to do, but I'm doing it as a man, so it was brought up through my mother. It's an incredible story. It was fun. You're so accomplished. You have a couple of degrees. You're an educator, former great athlete. You've accomplished so much. Mom did an incredible job inspiring you to achieve. Mm. Accurate? That's the truth, that's the whole truth because I can remember when I first went to college, uh, uh, Phil Edmond and myself, we drove down to Frank Phillips Junior College. Uh, I dropped Phil off at the door, and I told him, I said, Phil, man, I don't feel good, man. I don't think I'm going to go back home, man. I don't, I don't want to go to school, man. I want to go back and take care of my mom and sister. And so he said, no, man, we can stay and we can make it work. I said, no. I said, I'm going to go on home. So I drove back that same night. I got home about 2 o'clock that morning, and my mom was saying, well, hey, why you come home? I said, well, I want to take care of you and, and Benita, you know, so... Uh, that's why I don't want to go to school. She said, we'll talk about it in the morning. So the next morning, she talked to me, told me, son, you'll be the first one in the family to go to college and you can make good things of yourself and you get your degree and you get your good job and you don't have to live the kind of lifestyle that we've lived so far. And I want you to do bigger and better things. So I called the coach back. He said, well, if you come back by Friday, you still have your scholarship. So I waited until Friday. I waited till Friday. And I got down there before five because I had to be back there before five o'clock. I think I got there by 3.30 because I wanted to just stay at home as long as I possibly could. And I knew how long it would take me to get there. So I knew I would get there in time. And then from that point forward, I just stayed away until I got my degree. So, wow. So that was a, that was a push and that was an effort that it took. Well, you played for the great Jim Holzman first yeah, at yeah. Albuquerque High. Yeah. If I could back up the clock, yep. I would love to play for Coach right. Jim Holzman, the legend. Right. Green jacket, right. short haircut. Yeah. Man, he knew how to coach youngsters and he coached you. Yeah. What did Jim Holzman do for you? He instilled a lot of discipline in us, you know, because a lot of us that was playing ball for him, you know, we didn't have father figures, you know, and he was a figure 
for us, you know. He taught us about being uh, hygiene and taking care of ourselves, parents, uh, conduct, very, you know, how you carry yourself when you go out. And, you know, he used to always tell us on field, uh, when we go out of town games, to uh, take a dime. And we would all have to put a dime for a tip at the table or a quarter, you know, uh, for the ladies to show respect and stuff like that. So a lot of us had never eaten at restaurants at that time, you know, and he was uh, exposed us to a lot of that by taking us to townhouse lounge to eat steaks because steaks, we, you know, in the black neighborhood, having a steak was, that was nothing like that back then, you know, and so Coach instilled a lot of stuff into us by bringing us under his arm, you know, and, and, and directing us and giving us direction, you know, so he was, a, he, was a good, he was a good director for us, you know. Without his leadership, you know, I think a lot of us probably would have fell off the, off the curb, you know. You played at Highlands University. Yeah. Yeah. And I was looking over some of the stats. Mm -hmm. You were a scoring machine for the Cowboys in Las Vegas, New Mexico. You got better as you matured. Mm -hmm. Fair statement? That's the truth, Henry. Uh, when I was just coming out of high school, I wasn't sure who I was or what I wanted, you know. And then as I progressed and as I, I talked to my mom and, and doing that, going back to school and I just had developed a different mental attitude about everything in life. You know, I said, well, hey, nothing's going to be accomplished unless I do it myself. No one's going to give me anything. It's not going to be handed to me on no platter. So anything I had to get, I had to earn it. So uh, the way that I wanted to earn it, I wanted to do it the best that I possibly could. So, I, you know, I always wanted to be the best at what I did, you know. And, I still try to carry that on now by when I direct these kids with our little AAU club, I tell them things like that, to try to be the best you could possibly be. And then if that's the best you could do, then leave it as that. You have an education. Yeah. You got a bachelor's and a master's. You're an mm -hmm. educator in the Albuquerque public school system. As mm -hmm. a teacher, how much do you cherish that degree? And how much do you cherish the opportunity of teaching young men and women? Well, you know what, Henry? Uh, being in education is sort of like being when I worked for the city. I worked in the community. I worked and ran a community center. I was a director. And it's, it's, both of them work hand in hand because as long as you're dealing with kids, you know, you're going to be able to, to, to give them direction. If, if you give them positive direction, they'll listen to you. And if you have something to show for it, then they're going to pay attention. Wow. So, well. You got my undivided attention today. Well, I appreciate today. it, man. I appreciate no it. No <laughs> question. You know, uh, you coach the AAU teams mm -hmm. that represent the state of New Mexico mm -hmm. against, against the best competition that you can find anywhere in the world mm -hmm. at these huge tournaments in the summertime. Right. You take New Mexico's best. Mm -hmm. A few players from around the community, mm -hmm. around the vicinity, Colorado, Texas, mm -hmm. Arizona, and you take these teams and you coach them and they're one inch away from a college degree like yourself, mm -hmm. a college scholarship. That means a lot to you, doesn't it? Uh, they're showcasing their talents. The only way the kids are going to get the exposure out of New Mexico is what we do with them in these summer tournaments. The tournaments that we go to, we've built up our reputation to where we get in the main venues to where all the college coaches are going to be there to see. Now, whether or not we have the talent that's going to be able to be productive at those tournaments, we haven't been as good. But, hey, the kids have put on a good show, and we've given a lot of kids an opportunity to go to college. I think out of the number of years that we've done it, I think we've got about 170 kids that's gone to school uh, that has had an opportunity to go to college. Uh, as far as the ones that's finished, we haven't come up with a count yet. But I think Marty may have that, and I'm not quite sure what it is, but we have quite a few guys at the finish college and use this as a tool, as a means, you know. So it's, 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 it's exposure, and it's for them to showcase themselves, you know. And some of those kids have never been exposed like that. And so when they get to these venues like this, they say, wow, they're amazed at what they see too. And they see how New Mexico is a little bit behind everyone else as far as talent-wise. You know, what does that mean to you? It means, uh, you to know... To see kids blossom. Hey, man, it's a, And to guide them, and they had no idea that this experience was going to be so beneficial to them. Look at the first kid that was in our club, Alex Kirk. 
he was the first guy that we had come out of the club that plays that's trying to get into the NBA. So it's kind of exciting, you know, and we're going to be helping Alex with his little basketball camp coming up pretty soon. So, you know, he's trying to give back to the club. You know, we've had people give to our club as well, too. So uh, Cameron Burstow came back and we helped him with his camp and he's going to give us something. You know, Tony Snell, you know, these are ex-Lobos. They know what we've tried to do to these kids and for these kids. Let's go back mm -hmm. and share that humbling story you shared with me not too long ago. That when it was time to eat, your mom had to really be creative. And right. you had to go out and help mom get that special food. Your yeah. beautiful mom depended <laughs> on your leadership. And you invite people over to eat and have a little dinner. Yeah. What did you serve them for dinner, Elvin? Well, well you know what? Uh, coming from the South, you know, there was a lot of boiled foods that we used to have. You know, collard greens, you know, pinto beans, you know, rice you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we would get commodities. And the kids uh, would always laugh. You'd say, oh, you guys got commodities in your box and stuff like that. But that was the only way that we was gonna be able to survive, you know? And I knew what my mom had to do in order for us to be able to eat, you know? So that, that, was, that instilled a lot into me to go out and, and make something of myself to where I didn't have to raise my kids the same way that my mom did, you know? So, uh, if everybody had to live the kind of lifestyle I lived, uh, you know, living in a one-room place and we have a hot plate in one corner and we have a bucket in another corner for the bathroom and have a mattress on the floor for our bed and, and then pick the mattress up in the morning and then we have a living room. So, hey, you know, coming from that to where, where I am now, you know, and I try to tell these kids that if what their parents go through now, they need to really accept or appreciate what they're getting because they really don't know what the effort is going to be for them to have to do for their kids. And so if they could just really take what their parents are doing for them to try to get to excel, you know, they need to take advantage of that. He's got a great big heart, ladies and gentlemen. I mean this big, compassionate <laughs> man, great leader in our community. And just as recent as this morning, and I don't even have his permission to tell the story, but you met a man who was needing gasoline. Yeah. And he had a big, big car. He yeah. had places to go. Mm -hmm. You helped us. Do you mind sharing that story? Well, you know, hey, what hey, happened? It was just, I was just happened to stop it and get gas. And this lady pulled up behind both of me and this, this gentleman, he had a, RV, an old RV, it was, you know, you could tell he, he's, he's been having a hard time. And so this lady pulled up behind us and her horn went off and she thought she had shocked both of us. And we said, no, so me and him just started a conversation. He said, oh, I wish I had a little bit more money. I only had about $1.86 for gas, but I got some DVDs and TVs in here if you want to buy some uh, if for sale. Uh, I just need a little bit more gas. So I just said, well, here, man, here's 20 bucks. I said, God told me to give you this because he's going to give it back to me in another way. So, I, you know, and I, you know, things happen for a reason. I think a lot of the things I do is because of the Lord, you know, because he has so much to instilled into me. Because when I was little, my mom used to make me go to church before I could watch the Dallas Cowboys. They couldn't watch the football game on Sunday until I go to Sunday school. So I would always go to my friend's house and try to sneak over there to watch the game. And his mom would make us go to church. We had to go to Sunday school, you know. So, you know, those things like that, God had a lot to do with my life. God bless you, Elvin you Metters. Know. What a joy. Thank you, Henry. To I'll have you. you in here today. <laughs> and I'll never forget, as we were all kids growing up, watching the Albuquerque High Bulldogs beat Hobbs at the famous pit. 18,000 fans looking on, and your team defeated Hobbs and Ralph Tasker, 71-70. Yeah. 81. 80. 81-80? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Man, don't let me make that mistake. No, no, I won't and let nobody make that. That's you were mistake. awesome on you know. the floor that night. What <laughs> a memory. What Thank a you, joy bro. to have you here. I appreciate it. Wow. I'll tell you. <laughs> Does that inspire you, ladies and gentlemen? Elvin Metters. And he corrected me. Get it right, Henry. 8180, <laughs> Albuquerque High over the Hobbs Eagles. And they were led by Jim Holzman. Hobbs led by Ralph Tasker. Henry T was right there on the first floor of the pit watching all that. Wow, I'm inspired. <laughs> Thank you to Alvin Metters for being our guest today. 
We're coming back with a gentleman named Gene Pino. He has an incredibly powerful story to share with you as well. We'll be back on KZQ Channel 32 in one minute. an old fable. People say it every day, that you can count your friends on one hand. You know what? I can count on this man on my, on my one hand. Friendships are rare in this world, like this man gives. He gives his, his total being to all his acquaintances. And we all feel that Gene Pino is our very close friend. Warm and friendly, talented, creative, educator, former great athlete, the list goes on and on. And it was won many awards, including a special award from the New Mexico Hall of Fame, the Award of Distinction. He's our friend Gene Pino. He's here today, one of the greatest high school basketball coaches we've ever had here, and a powerful educator. Coach Pino, how are you today, buddy? I'm good, Henry. Thank you for having me. What an honor to have you here, Coach. Let's start. You've had so many accomplishments in your career, and today, working with the New Mexico Activities Association, you're still going and achieving. Where did it all begin with you? Let's go back when you were a little kid, and Mom and Dad say, we're going to lead our young man to success. Tell me about the home life. Well, Henry, I came from a very large family, and both my parents worked. And they encouraged us to do our very best in school. And my dad was a state policeman, and he was always on duty. And my mother worked at Cutland Air Force Base. Bless her heart. Wow. So we kind of raised ourselves, my older brother, and sister babysat us. But I can remember Coach Pius was my junior high football coach. He's in the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame. I had wonderful coaches and teachers at Berlin High School. And as I mentioned to you, they encouraged us to do everything. It's not like it is today where the baseball coach just wants you to play baseball. Coach Padilla made us play football and run track, play basketball, baseball, whatever we wanted to. Wow. You were a great athlete. You enjoyed being an athlete, did you not? Well, I was very fortunate to play on some great teams with some talented individuals. We got to play in the state tournament. And back in them days, it was at Highland High School. Yeah. And it was a big deal back then. Now kids get to run down the ramp at the pit, and that's really a neat thing. But when I played, we looked forward to going to Highland High. You also excelled in a very high degree of achievement as a as a scholar, when they looked at Gene Pino's grade point average, they looked at tremendous success. What got you so serious about achieving in the classroom? Well, uh, my coaches always emphasize that academics came before athletics and activities. And I tried to be the same way as a coach. And. Um, my mother just encouraged us to read and read and read. Wow. And I'm, I would say my brothers and sisters are more intelligent than I was. I just worked hard and studied. But you were inspired. That's the name of this show, Inspiration. You were inspired to achieve. 
And then later on, after high school, you go to the university, get a degree, you coach basketball at Del Norte High School, and you are a terrific coach. Let me give you five on your great accomplishments as a coach. Thank you. What did that experience mean to you, coach? Well, I was around some great coaches that mentored me. Bill Duffy, Howard Anderson, Sue Dixon, Ray Giannini. I learned from all of them. And thank goodness they would take a young coach like me under their wing and mentor us. You met a beautiful lady who later became your wife. Tell me about your beautiful wife. My wife is a Hall of Famer. Give us her she, name. Sadie Garcia. She's a Manzana graduate, and her brother played on two state championship basketball teams at Manzano. So she grew up in the gym watching basketball. And she never minded that I had to go to practice or she had to go watch the games. And she had a very distinguished teaching career with APS. Wow. And she inspired you as well. Man, you've been around inspirational people forever, Coach. Yes, I've been very fortunate to avoid being coached by some of the best people. Amen. Frank Castillo, Buddy Robertson, Joey Montano, Scott Evans, Gary Tripp, Sally Marcus. I, I've just been so fortunate to work with so many great people. And a guy today who's like your brother, Marty Seitz. Marty Seitz, yes. Marty's the captain of a ALS walk team. And last year when Marty really spearheading everything, I think the year before him, we raised about $5,000. Wow. Marty got involved and we raised over $13,000. Let's stop right there. You have ALS. When you were diagnosed with ALS, do you recall that first day and the first words that came from the doctor's voice and suddenly you had to absorb it and you had to realize, he just told me I have ALS. Do you mind going back to that moment and sharing that moment with us, coach? I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday, March 8th, 2011. I was supposed to be at Bernalillo High School went working the state basketball tournament. It was the first day of the tournament. And my boss gave me two hours off to go to UNM to keep my doctor's appointment I've been waiting for. They thought I had a no football injury and they needed to operate on my neck. But when I went to UNM, my doctor was very thorough, and she determined that I had Lou Gehrig's disease. And I really felt, I came in that day, I really felt like I died. Mm -hmm. It really crushed me because I had read about Lou Gehrig, and I knew about the disease, and, but I didn't think I had it. I just thought I had an old football injury that they were going to operate on me and make everything better. As a matter of fact, my wife had to leave school that day to come pick me up. I was so um, bummed out that she actually had to drive me home. And, uh, you know, it, it was very humbling to learn and, and the doctor was very thorough. She explained to me all my symptoms and why they really believed I had ALS. It's not just one thing, I mean, it's always a combination of different symptoms that lead them to the diagnosis. Coach is supposed to slow you down, but you know what hasn't done anything to you except be a catalyst speeding you up, doing more with your life, 
sharing more of your heart, giving even more, being an inspiration to other people like Henry T. You never stop inspiring others. God bless you for that, Coach. What moves you today in that positive direction? Well, Henry, I retired 10 years ago from Albuquerque Public Schools, and I thought I was going to just play golf. But I was so bad at golf. <laughs> and then Marty became the president of AYBM. So Marty asked me, because our very great president we had before, Jim Patterson, retired. And so we didn't think we could replace Jim. But Marty asked me to do it, and we did our very best. Wow. And you've done it so well. That organization has leaped high above whatever mark they had before because of your inspiration there, your organizational skills, just your presence. Everything gets better. Like they say, everything that Gene Pino touches turns to gold. Amazing. You're an amazing story that just keeps on lifting people up. How about your near and far future? You still have goals, you want to achieve more. Do you mind sharing your future with us in our closing comments today? Well, I mean, I, I kind of, um, I wake up very, very happy every morning to be alive and to be around great friends like you and Marty and all my other family and friends. And I'm very honored to speak and advocate and raise money for ALS. I, what can we do? Well, Henry, we're having the Ice Bucket Challenge this month. And I think everybody knows about that. And then we're also having the walk at Isotope Park on September 27th. All right. A Sunday morning where the isotopes are awesome, like all the Major League Baseball, because of Lou Gehrig, and they all donate their baseball stadiums to ALS Walks to raise money. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank Coach Gene Pino for being here today, and I give you my word, in front of the audience here in some way, shape, or form, they're going to throw the cold water bucket on Henry T. And we'll raise money through KZQ TV Channel 32 for ALS. You've and, got my commitment, Coach. And then we have a t-shirt for you that says, I took the ice bucket challenge for Gene Pino and ALS. Amen. Thank God you. bless you, Coach. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Wow. Close friend, and you can count him on that hand. He's a friend of Henry T's. Get involved with ALS, ladies and gentlemen. We'll give you more details in the near future. And thank you for being with us today on KZQ Channel 32. Wow, Henry T gets all the inspiration. I hope some of that rubbed off on you today with our special guest. Have a great day next Tuesday morning at 8.30 and 9 o'clock that same day right here on TV 32. Have a great day. You have been watching another exciting episode of Be Inspired with Henry T. If you would like to support this program, please contact Henry at 505-907-4523 or email him at originalgameface at gmail.com. Watch Be Inspired with Henry T. Tuesdays at 8.30 a.m. and again at 9 p.m. on KZQ TV 32.